As directors who have helmed, you know, a, a good portion of these episodes, I would say, um, I, I'm curious for the both of you, um, what was a moment where when you read it in the script, there was an, an immediate sense of knowing, visualizing how you wanted to render it on screen, whether it was a small character moment or like a big action set piece? Um was it instant? I'm not quite sure it was instant for us, but it came like very soon after in the car chase in 103 was knowing that we wanted to um, stay with our characters and be in the experience with them and experiencing at least the first part of that car chase um, from inside the car with that 360 revolving camera. Um, and it might have been the case because we just recently watched uh, the indie movie Waves, and they do a lovely um, character development piece, a little bit like that. And so it's very much inspired by that. But like, what happens if you choreograph the action around this moving camera? So the action happens just in time for us to see it at each beat and just in time for us to come back for the for the dialogue and, and keep in it and keep in the relationship with them until Kate goes out the window and then we break that. We also knew we wanted at some point for them both to be wearing really bad sweaters, Christmas sweaters. <laughs> Very important character development. So we made sure that happened. I feel like that's a crucial part of any any kind of Christmas set, any Christmas set story. Um, I love that you brought up the episode three car chase and that single take scene, because I think that's something that fans have been buzzing about since it, we got a first glimpse of it and then seeing it last week. Um, for both of you, what's one thing that people might be surprised to know about behind the scenes, what goes into kind of making a shot like that happen? So much. We actually started working on that before we were, you know, in Atlanta for the shoot. So a good month and a half, two months before uh, we worked with the post biz team on starting to bring that to life. Like it, it's, it's extensive. And from talking about, what's shot in New York, what's not, how you do it, what your cameras are, you know, the technical side of it, and then trusting your team to help bring that together in the best way possible. And right up until a few weeks before, we were still talking about how to shoot it, and we had some backup options on the day if something didn't work. So it was a continually evolving scene, uh, both technically and creatively. But we feel like by the end of it, when we decide on how many arrows and how many cars explode and what they, you know, it all kind of came together, but it took a good three to four months um, to work on that. Um, given this week's episode and the, I would say the Florence Pugh of it all, um, how difficult is it to try and kind of go through producing a normal episode of television while also trying to hide a big character reveal like that? I'm assuming it's, it's uh, there's a lot of moving pieces involved. Well, especially in in episode four, you don't see it coming because you haven't you haven't had the seed so much of it. I mean, we we talk about the the Natasha of it all um, in that what we call the kind of the Christmas montage where um, Kate and Clint become closer of, uh, as friends than they've ever been. Um, but in terms of disguising it throughout, you know, you've got this. Um, person who appears on the roof in a mask and and if, if you know the comics you'll you'll recognize kind of the lights on the mask and so there was I'm sure there were fans who were already going oh this is it this is it this is it but at that point we just have to let the action play out and uh, the reveal happens when the reveal happens you know um, I think I have time for one more question and and for both of you you've worked on another fabulous show in the great um, is there anything that surprised you in terms of similarities between a show like that and this one, even though, you know, on, on the surface, the genres are very different? Yeah, I, I think actually one thing, this is more a technical thing, is just um, the great had a, had a lot of corridors, mm -hmm. um, a lot of great walk and talks. And I think that's something that we, we really fell in love with is just keep your characters moving. And because Clint and Kate are always on a mission, it was a natural kind of inclination of ours to keep them on the move as much as possible. And that, that was something, something that came across from what we, what we enjoyed doing on The Great um, and really implemented here to keep our story uh, moving. That's a very technical um, mm -hmm. learning. 
a, a tonally, you know, obviously the great is different in so many ways, but there's an absurdity to the great and kind of like real human emotion in crazy situations. And that's similar to what Kate and Clint are. They're real humans. And then this, you know, the LARPers get involved and like the tracksuit mafia are like a bit ridiculous and also dangerous, you know, and, you know, in Catherine's story, they, you know, she's a, she's a, a woman going through this world of, of Peter where crazy stuff can happen at any given moment and she just has to roll with the punches. So in, in that way, um, you can find connections between the two of them. For sure. Um, that's actually all the time I have, but thank you so much for both of you for sitting, taking the time to chat about the show. It was, a, it's been great so far and, and I can't wait to, to see next week's and, and find out how this all continues. So thank you again for your time. Thanks so much. Thank you.